there's so many places of untapped creativity and so yes that is a negative as well but because of that it opens up so many avenues you know and like the environment's great there's like the esplanade and like the it's the place is what you make it so there's so many like amazing tools here. Palmerston North gets a pretty bad rap I've certainly heard it described as dreary and a bit boring but it's the kind of small city that's not overly reliant on one sector that we need to keep growing to alleviate some of that burden on Auckland and Wellington. During our few hours here, we want to ask young people what they think are the best and worst things about living here and the type of change, if any, they hope a government can bring. It's good, like the city is quite big, but it's not too big, I guess. Like it's still, everything is still in walking distance, I guess. It's not like Auckland, where if you don't have a car, it's kind of hard to get around. So. And the people, the people is pretty good too, so everyone's quite friendly around here. One of the worst things are definitely the traffic lights around here. It's really annoying, like it takes you so long, it's such a small town, but the traffic lights are just so annoying. But um, the other, other thing is it's obviously a student town, so things are really easy um, to live here, um, and the people are really good. It's quite depressing really. I want to get the hell out of here and go to Wellington. Yeah, something to do, just stuff to do. We eventually met Tish, a young mother living in the city. Do you feel like uh, the government gives enough support to Palmerston North? Do you, does it feel like the government uh, cares about people in Palmerston North? Creating open-minded citizens is a dangerous thing for a government, you know? If we were all so open-minded and the funding was pushed for us to be open-minded, then we would all be exploring and expanding. So I guess by answering that in a calculated way, it would probably be like, I don't know, I don't really feel like they do. Elections coming up in a month's time. What are the issues that you care most about? Um, I think the things that I care most about is our youth, to be honest, because that's where, you know, it's all in education. We're not being educated enough to be able to make the right decisions and we're, like, missing fundamental parts of decision making for us to start, like, learning about stuff and pulling structures away of what's in our food or, you know, what is actually happening around us and we're more... Um, being pushed to compete with each other, you know. Sure. Society has us more wanting to compete with each other and be one better than the other or who's ring this or who's ring that rather than like what's going on with the economy and that doesn't happen by a flip switch and it's not society's fault, it's the way that we've been conditioned. So like education is the most important thing. <laughs> with the uh, election coming up in a month's time, can I ask you like what are the issues that you feel like you care about the most? Um, probably just the young ones, getting them to follow the right path to having a good education and actually living life to what it should be, not causing trouble and and that makes it more of a better town and it will just help the new generation. Housing um, and also um, students as well, obviously being a student myself and making sure there's jobs for students and keeping keeping students in New Zealand is obviously a good idea to... The creepiest thing would probably be um, drugs, there's nothing to do here. Like, when you say drugs, how, how is it a problem? Um, it's a problem because it affects people and yeah, their lives. Like, yeah, if, you see it much around there? Yep, yep, and yeah. I've personally experienced it. Like I say, I'm from um, a farming background and water quality is important for the public, but you've got to remember farmers and members of the public too, and of course they want um, their children and their neighbours to be able to swim in the rivers too. So um, interestingly, the um, water quality in the Horizons area has been um, increasing in recent years, so that's something really positive that we should be focusing on. Um, and yeah, I think that obviously um, there's all different types of farming that need that farming types that need to work together in the sure. rural community. Um, so dairy farming, sheep and beef, um, horticulture, they all need to work together to be um, improving the water quality. But also the urban um, need yeah. to be doing that too, because there's a lot of uh, like obviously a lot of people in a small amount of area and a lot of concrete, and so there's a lot of uh, drain like the drain water, um, wastewater, all that kind of yeah. stuff that um, can't be ignored either. Water quality hadn't really come up until Wairoa yesterday and just now again in the square, but it is a massive election talking point. The government has conceded it's going to be one of the most challenging issues of the decade. They've set a target of getting 90% of our rivers and lakes swimmable by 2040. We're by the Manawa II River, one of the most polluted rivers in the country, and we're going to have a chat with Thomas Nash. He's the local Greens candidate. 
one of the reasons we've had such uh, difficulty with the Manawatu River and rivers and waterways around New Zealand is there's been a chronic lack of funding from the government. While you've seen these, these kind of pollution side things mount up, you haven't seen the solution side mount up to match it. And really it's about using, it's about farming smarter. It's not about farming as a, as a problem per se, it's about where we do the farming. For example, over in the Tararua, uh, if you do the same kind of farming over there with the soil types they've got, it's going to leach through, the, the, the pollutants are going to leach through pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, whereas if you do it over here on this side, uh, it's, not going to, it's not going to leach through uh, as quick at all. So it's, it's kind of about you know, how you use the, the land appropriately. And also, of course, we, we really need to make sure we've got good wastewater treatment services and that we are you know, making sure that things aren't leaching out from septic tanks and leaching out from uh, our, our wastewater treatment. We head to Wellington tomorrow, a place some people perceive as being a bit of a bubble from the rest of the country. We're going to try and find out if that's the case.